So here we have the Kopesh, one of my favorite ancient swords. I think it's pretty awesome. It's a mix between a sword and a battle axe used in ancient Egypt in the Bronze Age. And I ended up modeling my own version of this. And I did so because I wanted to make a few versions to show a way of thinking about breaking down things if something doesn't go the way you want in CAD. I'm using Libra, but this is the same for FreeCAD, SolidWorks, NX, Onshape, whatever platform you're using if it's parametric CAD. So here are a few versions of the Kopesh that I have made. As you can tell, I've made it my own, taken a few liberties and changed the design a little bit, and I had a lot of fun doing it. So we'll talk about how I made these and the differences between them and how breaking things down makes things simpler, more rebuildable, etc. And speaking of breaking things down so that they're more simple, today's sponsor Brilliant is a master of this. What a great segue. Brilliant is amazing at portraying complex concepts in ways that make them easy to understand. Brilliant has something for everyone who wishes to grow their knowledge. There is a lot on here from pre-algebra to calculus, computer science to algorithm fundamentals and neural networks. One can expect new content monthly and with a learn by doing approach for anyone who enjoys doing STEM in fun, bite-sized pieces. After all, understanding the driving principles behind problems is the key to solve them. I don't think there's a better way to learn math, science, and computer science than with the interactive interface that Brilliant has. I myself have particularly enjoyed the gear course covering planetary gears. If anyone would like to tune in to the video series where I cover designing involute spur gears from scratch, this course is an excellent precursor to become familiar with the driving principles of spur gears. Please click the link in the description below to get started for free, and the first 200 who sign up for this link will receive 20% off an annual premium subscription. So we'll start off um, by going through attempt number one. I started a sketch for, uh, for a start point and an end point, and I tried to do the blade in all in one loft. And I knew that this really wasn't gonna work out, but I wanted to display it, right? Maybe you're sitting at your station, you try something all in one loft and it doesn't quite work. One of the complications here, if I pull up my Kopesh image again, is that the Kopesh is meant to be sharpened only along this part of the blade and possibly coming around here. It is not sharp right here, right? You kind of see it's almost like a stretched out battle ax in that sense. And so my loft really shouldn't be sharp down here. I would either have to add a whole bunch of, you know, intermediate sketches that will change the profile as I go to try to make the blade sharp and maintain a consistent sharpness throughout my loft. And, you know, the traditional hook feature back here really didn't even work out at all trying to loft that. Uh, so there's a lot of complicating factors in trying to do it in one loft. And that's not really the best approach. So what do we do? We take one complex feature and we break it down into more manageable features, uh, usually multiple features, to make up for it. So let's pull up uh, the second version of my Kopesh, which I was able to finish. You'll notice my little addition here is a very, very exaggerated drop down from what the original Kopesh is. But anyway... Rolling back the history, I created a series of sketches that ultimately outline, you know, what the Kopesh is going to look like. And then I use some of the sketch elements to create things. For instance, instead of trying the whole thing all in one loft, I did only the sharp part, right? We broke it down into something a little bit more simple and did only the sharp thing. And here's the blade. I think I did a 20 degree sharpness on that. And we just did this little front section of blade here. Then I did an extrude cut and I did a sweep and followed this front path around with the blade so that the blade remained the same level of sharp all the way around using a sweep. You can tell we kind of started this little hook feature here, but it, it's uh, still very, very um, needing to be finessed. And then let's do an extrude cut. And so I cut out this area of the blade and I think, hey, well, and I'll show you why I did the cut. If you haven't already noticed, 
the width differs, right? So I have all this material that seems to just be extra now. And how do I deal with that? Because it can be kind of a challenge. So I'll do an extrude cut, and I did so intentionally to where uh, this vertice right here and here are on this face's plane. I did that on purpose. And I did a loft. And my loft was a sketch on this face that ended up at these two vertices. You can tell I wanted a sketch to connect both these vertices and this face. And I lofted all the way to the front here. Right? So I lofted from this face to this front face. And then, this is where the, the fun happens, I went into a 3D sketch and I imported all of these edges as different 3D sketches. And then I went into my loft and I defined those as uh, guide curves, or local guide curves, so that my loft will connect with the already existing faces. And in that way we can get some really nice tight faces that have a somewhat consistent curvature. So I've got the front worked out, right, so that there's a good amount of complexity. And by the way, I, I know I made this blade way too thick, this sword would weigh a ton in real life, but I'm also doing this more to show the process than to make a realistic sword. So we'll do an extrude cut where we cut out the traditional kopesh hook at the end. Of course, that's used to hook around someone's shield and pull it away and then stab them, which is quite gruesome. <laughs> and then we'll cut another a part out of this back end. I've got a rear hook, which I don't think is part of the traditional Kopesh design, but hey, it's kind of cool, I think. We'll do an extrude, and we'll extrude this part. And we'll create some fillets, and then this rear handguard. Some more fillets, and created a whole bunch of planes, which I'm not showing right now. And then I create a big loft, right? So I, I loft out between all these planes that I've created this little grippy texture here, and you can tell I just made a bunch of hexagons that vary a few degrees as we go back. Then I create a revolution, and then I simply fill it everything. There it is, and I color the faces, and we're done. So we've got a little bit of a graphical uh, silliness going on here. If I go to my view, show my planes, hide my planes, that kind of fixes the graphics. So just a, a little deal with what's going on in the graphics. So that is a Kopesh. Now I have to ask, this loft with 3D sketches was very, very, um, I don't know what the word is, invasive. Like there's a lot going on there. There's a lot of topology that's dependent on a lot of things, right? It's not that solid of a solid model. See what I did there? So can we make that more simple? What is all of this um, NURBS curviness at the front worth to you? Because if it's not absolutely important, I think we can simplify it. And that's when I made the next iteration on this where I keep trying. I, I, I intentionally modeled these things this way to try to show a process that goes from too complex to break it down and make it more simple, break it down and make it more simple, break it down and make it more simple, right? So let's go to another model of the Kopesh where I make it even less Kopesh-like, because I was starting to have fun with... It looks almost more like a fantasy blade, right? I added a little saw blade right there, <laughs> and just started having really a lot of fun with it. But let's go back and look at the core idea behind how I was able to simplify this front point yet again. All right, so I start off in my features with a sweep, much like the sweep that we've already had. I simply sweep it all the way around, this time all in one. Uh, we go to an extrusion, and I simply fill that in with half an extrusion and mirror it. See, the idea is I set up my sketch so that this arc was tangent to vertical, and so any vertical feature that I put in would be tangent, so we'd have a relatively continuous surface. And uh, that is a much more simple surface than trying to loft everything in. But of course, using an extrude means that we're flat on this face, whereas the other one was slightly curvy. 
what does that slightly curviness equate to in value for you, right? You're the engineer and you get to decide that. But I hope it shows that if we use things that are a little bit more flat, how much more simple our process becomes, right? I did the same thing. I filled in an extrusion, mirrored that. You don't have to mirror this, right? You can do a mid-plane extrude if you want, and that saves you some features in your history tree. Another extrude, another mirror. And then we extrude out the handguard, create a bunch of planes, and do our loft. We again do the revolution. And then I extrude cut out this little hook feature. We add some fillets. On our grippy handle. I did a few less sketches uh, on this grippy handle, but you get the idea. We do an extrude up here to <laughs> really add some strength to this weak point. We mirror that and then we add a large fillet. And you know, I, I added a humorously large fillet and thought, ah, maybe I should roll with that. So I did, and then I did a little weight cut out there, made it more skeletonized. Um, I did a loft, and then I ended up patterning that loft to make a little saw blade, which is totally not true to the Kopesh and not very practical of a saw either, but what's the point if we don't have fun? And then I added some colors to the faces, and I scaled the part slightly larger since this turned out to be slightly smaller than the other one, and I wanted to have two cross Kopeshes about the same size as my thumbnail. I uh, did a big wrap. So there's my wrap where I take material out. That could have easily been a cut as well. Then a wrap on the other side now. And then I mirrored the entire part because I wanted the saw blade to be on the other side for when I put it in the thumbnail. So that is my final version of the Kopesh. Hopefully that was a lot easier to go through than the previous version. Even though that it probably equated to a slightly longer tree, you can tell how much more easily rebuilt this is, easily changed, less susceptible to topology errors because we broke up complex features more and more and more down into multiple steps. So hopefully that's a good idea on how to approach uh, complex problems in CAD and getting them to actually work for you. Uh, so I think that's all I have. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.